Lord and Savior of your life. If you do, He is faithful and just to forgive you, to save you, to make you His child. But if you do not, He is also faithful and just to condemn you. He wants that none would perish, but he also knows that most will. It is those that still have ears to hear that we are speaking to. Because God's word declares that you will only hear him calling you so many times. And the more you harden your heart, and stiffen your neck to His Word, to His call, the less and less you will hear it until you can receive it no more. And at that point, what it means is He has released you to your father, the devil. And we pray to God, you have not reached that point. And we will be faithful and honor our Lord's command to bring forth His Word, to go ye therefore and preach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God to save you or it is the power of God to damn you for eternity. Jessica. God's word says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. It is the fear of the Lord that brings wisdom. Thank you. And the truth of the matter is most do not fear God because they have no clue who He is. Because the God that they have invented would never send them to hell. He loves them and He has freed them to do as they wish and live as they like. And whatever they do, He'll forgive them because that's why He came. He's got their picture on his refrigerator. And heaven just won't be complete until you get there. That is a God of your imagination. That is a God of fiction. That is not the God of the Bible. The word fear here means reverence, awe, respect for just who God is. And unfortunately, most have no reverence. Most have no awe. Most have no respect for God. Because the God they created is just a mirror image of themselves. You just gave him the name God or Jesus to comfort yourself in your sin.
But as I said before, that Jesus will save you from nothing. In fact, it is that Jesus that will condemn you because God is a jealous God. And he will have no other gods before him. Not even the ones you create or the ones you profess to be. There are certain things that God hates. Six. Seven that he despises. Idolatry. Hands that shed innocent blood will all get you the worst that God can give you. And as bad as you can imagine it to be, your imagination does not even come close to how bad it will be. God's Word declares that you will beg Him for another chance and there will be none. You will beg Him to send people like us to your friends and family. And He will answer that He already did like He is doing right now for you. But they would not listen as you might not be listening as well. It is the fear of the Lord, the respect, the reverence of awe of who God is that will bring you wisdom. And wisdom is the key thing. Because when you receive wisdom, you receive understanding. Understanding of who God is. And also, understanding of just who you are. You do not want to receive what you deserve from God. Because His Word says that all you deserve is eternal hell. No. What you want to receive is grace and mercy. But that is only available for those who believe. He is crying out to you today. He is offering you His hand of fellowship right now. And as Joshua said, you right now must choose this day who you will serve. Whether it's the gods of the Egyptians, the gods of the Amorites, the gods of our fathers, or in your case, the God you have created. All idols created in their images. But then Joshua says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And he is making you make that choice today. And today, you are without excuse when you stand before him. You are not going to be able to say, Oh God, I did not know. He came today to give you the truth in the hopes that you will be set free from your sin. or to condemn you in it. That is the choice He gives you. And that is the choice that you will make here today. Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. But His brother James, what did he have to say? He said, for whoever shall keep the whole law 
and yet stumble in one point. He is guilty of it all. What does that mean? That means if you have broken one of his commandments, you have broken them all. And I am here to tell you, right now, just sitting in there, you have broken all ten of his commandments. And the wages of that is your death. Eternal death. What else does James say? For judgment, it is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Because mercy triumphs over judgment. What that means is the amount of mercy that you are willing to show is the amount of mercy that you can expect to be shown from God. Again, He does not want you to be deceived. You do not have to wonder. He tells you exactly how much mercy will be available for you. And we cry out to you today to be merciful to your child. Because the amount of mercy you show is that which you can expect to be shown. What does the Apostle Paul say? For the wrath of God, it is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in their unrighteousness. Because what may be made no what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. God has written His law upon your heart. And His law is the Ten Commandments. No one has to tell you that it is wrong to kill an innocent baby. But professing to be wise, you become fools by thinking that you no better than Almighty God. That you will actually be able to give Him a reason or an excuse that He did not think of. That He will actually say, I didn't think of that one. You're in. That is the wisdom of man. And God's Word says, you are a fool. He does not want you deceived. He does not want you thinking that you are okay when you are not. You are about as far from okay as you can possibly be. And yet in His love and in His mercy, he extends to you once again His hand of fellowship, His hand of forgiveness, His hand of mercy. But you must come to Him on His terms, not your own. What does the writer of Hebrews say? Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God under their foot? Who has counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified as just a common thing and has insulted the Spirit of Grace, the Holy Spirit 
of God. For we know Him who said, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge His people. Just because He is slow to anger, slow to wrath, does not mean that He will not judge you. It does not mean that He is not angry with you. It does not mean that His wrath does not abide upon you. What it does mean is that in His mercy, He is offering you yet again another chance. Do not waste that chance because you do not know if there will be another. Today is the day of salvation, for the kingdom of God is at hand. What did Jesus say? Jesus said in John 3.16, everybody go ahead and repeat after me, since everybody knows that verse, because it's their get out of hell free verse. But that is true only for those who take God's Word, bend it, twist it, remove it from context, and give it their own meaning. For you, God's Word says that all the curses of His book are upon you. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And that is the glorious good news and gospel of Jesus Christ for all who believe. For all who do not believe, it is the power of God to condemn you. And He already has. You see, God does love His creation. He made it. He made it all. And in fact, He said it is good. He is pleased with His creation. In the creation of it. Not in what we've done with it. But He also does not want you to be deceived into believing that because you are His creation, that you are His child. There is a very big difference. Jesus said to, to Nicodemus earlier that you must be born again to see the heaven of the the, 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 the heaven, God in heaven, the Father. It is only the child of God who shall inherit the kingdom. And in the realm of God, I hate to tell you, there is no such thing as an orphan. You are either His child or you are not. You are either a child of the Most High God or you are a child of your father, the devil. That's it. No middle ground, no fence to sit on. No time to think and consider. Unless you come to Him on His terms, you will be cast away on His terms. That's it. A child of God is one who is born again made a new creation in Christ. And you become a bondservant to Him. If you are not a slave to righteousness, you are a slave to your sin. And unless